All right, brother. Somehow or another, I have no idea how it happened. It's just one of them freak things. But somehow or another, a piece of solder. Show you right here. Somehow or another, a piece of solder got wedged in between this lead and this lead. This is a ground lead, your emitter. This is where the positive voltage goes to, which is your collector. It got wedged. Right here. See this cap? Under this cap, from here to here, a piece of solder got wedged. My guess is it then started sparking, and most of the time, little bitty solder, I call them solder buggers, <laughs> but little little pieces of tiny solder, if they're ever touching a negative and a positive, you'll just hear them pop, like a popcorn. They'll, they'll, they'll pop, and you know, some, most of the time disintegrate or it'll just pop and fly somewhere else fly out of you know fly away from the from the uh where it's where it's sitting and you don't have a problem I'm, i've had that happen quite a few times dealing with amplifiers like this uh etched board amplifiers this one seemed to have been big enough somehow that it melted and just kind of formed a bridge i'm gonna go through this amplifier really well which i did uh i did before it got sent out to you well, you got little bitty you know spots i, I mean that's, that's another reason why i like to go and go through and clean clean amplifiers and as you can see before i sent this to you i cleaned it that's why you didn't see no flux anywhere so I went around with a Q-tip and cleaning agent and cleaned the whole amp. That allows me to clean out any pieces of solder, etc. I'll turn it upside down. I'll blow it out with air. So I don't know where that piece of solder comes from, man. I, I honestly don't know. It's just one of them things. It's hard to really tell where exactly where it came from inside the amp. But I mean, it literally caused this transistor to catch fire. <laughs> This is the first time I've ever seen this. Now I've seen an amp before with a transistor that had caught fire, but I don't I don't think it was an amp I repaired. But this is the first time I've actually seen one on my bench that done this. And you know it wasn't the solder wasn't big enough to cause it, your your power supply probably to shut off or to blow any of the other transistors. Because now your box is back working, rocking and rolling, man. See, 500 watt slug. Oh, off the scale. Just hitting it with the radio, no driver. Over 500 watts peak. So she's back working and she is fixed. So now I know you want me to hang some wires out for a fan. But to be honest with you, man, that's really not safe. Cause I just recently had something happen where I sent an, an amp off to a guy and uh, like like that right there he turned the amplifier on and the wires were touching the, the heat sink and he popped the trace up here by the instead of hooking the wire you know Honestly, man, it'd be, be easier for me to do it the way I normally do my fan kits. Run the wires to this plug right here, okay? And then me give you a plug like this. I'll give you a plug like this, okay? With some wire hanging off for you to hook up to a fan, and then you can just plug it in, okay? That's a lot safer if you ask me. I mean, it's not a, really a big deal. If it's something you were doing right there yourself, you can run wire out the back to a fan. There ain't nothing wrong with that, but I'm just gonna do it this way. 
it'll make me feel better. All right. I'll be back just to show you that, and then we'll be getting on your Silver Eagle. All right, brother. Put your fan sticker on there. Here's your plug. The wire. You got the digital voltmeter hooked up to the end of the wire just so you can see that it works. There you go. These particular amps. You solder right here to this tab right here. Of course, there's other places you can do it at. But. Alrighty. So here's your plug right here, man. Tip. Tip is positive. In between the ring is negative. I particularly like using these uh, uh, stereo plugs for when I use this. Gives you an easier chance to uh, to not have a problem if, you ever, if somebody does ever plug it in while it's on. It's got a better chance because the ground will be the last thing it hits. But anyway, it's best to always plug in your plugs when the amp is off, regardless. So I'll go ahead and send this with you. Let's go ahead and check out your Golden Eagle, man. Your Silver Eagle, I mean. Alex Jones. Oh, yeah, one last thing. Just make sure this is right, because this was backwards when I got it. I like to do right. On, uh, red on right, black on left. I mean, in all honesty, it doesn't matter as long as you're plugging red into red. It doesn't matter. But I just wanted to remind that to you. If, if you ever take these apart, since they're power poles, do never, never plug black into red because they will plug in, man. Don't ever do that, okay? Red, red, black, black. All right. All right, here's your Silver Eagle. Everything in here looks fine, other than a transformer being crooked. <laughs> but, uh, the uh, amp ain't got to look perfect to work good. But anyway, uh, it's working the way it really should be. 500 watts of load. Well, this cap right here had a cold joint on the left side, so I went ahead and fixed that. About 180 watts. I mean, that's what you're gonna get out of an amp like this. RMS. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Let's see. So that's about 60, 70 watts. If I put it on low, the dead key is very low. Oh, 50 watts on low. PEP on load, oh yeah, a little bit over 150 watts. So, it's a good driver, man. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, uh, I would just run that Texas Star 500 with your radio, man. I mean, things doing over 500 watts, 600 watts, just hitting it with the radio. You know, it's AB biased. I'm just putting 20 watts peak in it. Put a decent sized radio in, you don't even need a driver. But if you want to use a driver, then just run this on low. Run it on low and run a small radio into it. Don't, don't run a big radio into this. Just a small radio. And I'm about to give you a call to ask you if you want me to do a power wire upgrade. If you do, I'll do a, uh, do a power wire upgrade for you and put an Anderson give, give you two Anderson connectors 
for this thing. 20 bucks. I'll give you a call though. Alright brother, just got done with your power wire upgrade. I went ahead and done a uh, full blown power wire upgrade all the way to the back of the transformer. I had a new choke right here, get, get a little inductance on the power line. And uh, I went ahead and added another hot bus back there because the little pad they have is so tiny. And also the 104 that was on there looked like it had been burnt or got too hot. So I just replaced that and put a new uh, ceramic cap on there for you. And I did see where you were talking about right here. Right there. I noticed it was not soldered on this lead, so I went ahead and soldered it, but that's completely fine. That's just carrying the power over to your preamp. That's all that's doing. That's carrying the power from your power switch right here over to the preamp so that the preamp can get power. It's just getting power from right here, which is coming from your hot bus. I know on some of these versions, they'll put a little resistor down there. There's no reason for that resistor. They're just doing that for the relay to do a little bit of current limiting. But 9 out of 10 amps you find out there are, are uh, not going to have a resistor going to the preamp for the relay. And that 9 out of 10 is this one. That's about the only amp I've ever seen do that. So you don't. that's something you don't have to have, man. That's perfectly fine. Yeah. All right. 500 watt slug. Go. Looks like it gained a little bit, didn't it? I think it was doing about 180 or so last time, and it's doing right there at the 200 mark. Nice. Funny, ain't it? Just add a little bit of power, uh, thicker power wires, and you gain just a tad bit of more power. That shows you it it, 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 it could have used it. And this is what was on there. And I basically just put a little bit thicker wire on there for you. This is some, uh, some 10 gauge. That right there is 12. And here are your Anderson connectors. And I had to pull out one of my... Uh, converters I had made that I hadn't pulled out in a long time. <laughs> I don't have any grays left. I have some yellows and oranges. So I went ahead and grabbed you a yellow one. And here's the one I'll be sending with you. Just remember man, when you put these on, you don't need a whole lot of heat at all if you got a big torch like this. I turn this down as low as I absolutely possibly can and do it that way. Alright, I'm going to check the preamp now. I ain't got too good of a feeling about it. This preamp section don't look too good. 500 watt slug RMS. We're reading the middle scale. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. right there about 80 bird. If I was on a thousand watt slug, it'd be reading 100. That's how the more closer you get down, the more accurate or more tight it is. I've noticed. All right. That'd probably be it for the video. I'm going to go ahead and check the preamp out real quick. Appreciate you, man. Let me get to, get to your brother's amp now. See ya. Okay, keep it set. Bye-bye. All right, Mr. Windy, uh, Windy City Bobcat. I thought I'd just make both of these videos one. <laughs> like I said, man, very rare, rarely, but every once in a while, you know, somebody will have to send a box back right after they get it to make some adjustments but this is a, a, a rare issue it took two brothers having to send both their amps back pretty quickly and they, they both had just small issues that's, that were mysterious like with this one the key in transistor wasn't the issue let me see if I can get something to point with it's plastic See this pad right here? That pad had solder that had leaked down. 
I have no idea how, because it wasn't doing it before it was sent out, and I think you used it for a little while before it started doing it. But basically, it had seeped down and was touching the pad that connects from this cap to here. So I had to put you a new 10 Micro Henry cap on, and what it was doing was just sparking and eating through the board. Can you see that? Eating through the board. It had ate the trace that leads this to the uh, RF sensing cap for the circuits. That's why I had to put in this wire right here from here. So basically the only way of fixing this without having to rip this whole board out and probably put two, three hours worth of work into it was to take it off this pad right here insulate the bottom from the case because that's what was going on it was touching the case just enough to make sparks for it to start eating through the board i mean you probably could have kept running it like that and it would just would have kept eating through the board but and when i got the box i don't know why but this lead right here carrying power to this transformer was unsoldered i don't know maybe if you unsoldered it trying to um trying to trying to fix it i don't know uh, but it was unsoldered which was kind of weird and the solder was still around it almost like it had heated up and popped up i don't know man but anyway i went ahead and replaced this jumper right here as well because it, it it just looked a little rough and uh it, the jumper was still good but while i'm in things changing stuff I'll, I'll just do that sometimes make myself feel better is replace things around an issue with brand new things so there's nothing to be worried about so all i gotta do now is just drop i went ahead and clean this up i know you had took this out and put it over here and you I mean you, you did a good job because the transistor works i just need to put another one right here for your preamp but uh went ahead and did so basically I, after i done that and i went ahead and replaced this cap right here as well just to be safe <laughs> so now it works no sparking none of that and i went ahead and did the upgrade so you can put a fan on here and I, all i gotta do is just put a sticker back here that says fan so you'll know it or whoever has the amp in the future will know it and um here I went ahead and made this lead right here for you. Here's your brother's right here. And you can just take the other end and hook it up to a fan. Make it a little easier on you. So she's still working, my friend. 500 watt slug. Got it on the peak. Oh, off the scale. It ain't focusing through the that pencil now. Uh, I mean, you can see it's doing all the scale, just ain't wanting to focus. There we go. Oh, yeah. All right, brother. And just to show you, turn this, well, we'll just leave it on. I'm going to hook the voltmeter up on this lead down here. It's hooked to your fan. And there you go. That's what we're running the amp on right now. It's 13.6 volts. So there you go. Just wanted to show you that the, the fan connection works just fine. Go ahead and unplug from that. So, all right, man, I'll go ahead and replace that uh, transistor on the preamp section right there. Drop a new uh, 2907 in there and put you a sticker back here and get the top back on it and get, get it back out to you, man. I really don't know how this happened. I know that, uh, you know, both of these boxes were was in pretty bad shape. I pretty much built them from the ground up. You know, one of the boxes I had to put a new a board in it from another. You know, there, there was some Frankenstein work. And uh, maybe there was just something weird just still <laughs> hanging around that I couldn't see up under the board just waiting to happen or something. I don't know. That's a lot of times in this type of work or 
And this type of hobby, you just have to throw your hands up and say, I don't know, but it's fixed now, and that's all that matters. <laughs> all right, buddy. Well, I'll go ahead and get this thing back to you, my friend. OGK said it. Bye-bye.